Hey, this is Necrofight, welcome. This time I'm bringing you a tutorial of how to beat the first tutorial boss, the Ludex Gundir. For people who have never played Dark Souls 1 or 2 before... Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric, where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. Mysterious. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. The fire fades, and the lords go without thrones. When the link of fire is threatened, the bell tolls, unearthing the old lords of Cinder from their graves. Aldrich, saint of the deep. Undead Legion, the Abyss Watchers. These guys are so cool. For all the people who play Dark Souls 1, they will remember. So... And the reclusive Lord of the Profaned Capital. Yon the Giant. Nameless, accursed, undead, unfit even to be cinder. And so it is that ash seeketh embers. Awesome intro, by the way. Really mysterious for all the people who don't know Dark Souls well. It's all about mystery, really. And for the people who played Dark Souls 1, well, you know that humans are linked by bonfires, and eventually the cycle repeats over and over and over until darkness comes over the land. That's the story of Dark Souls 2, that the darkness descends. And um, in Dark Souls 3, well, the names like sort of still that the undead are uh, hunting other undead because they're linked to the bonfire and they respawn over and over and yeah until one day they become cursed and don't have any morals anymore and they start attacking but this is about beating the first boss really I love the lore as well uh, which class I choose for the first boss I'm going for the strength build because people probably play that a lot. This is the... which is it? Warrior maybe? Yeah, warrior. Definitely. I don't go into details right now, but you can also parry him for all the dex builds, yeah. But, um, really, still an awesome intro. Still wondering about the lore behind all of it. Because I'm a big Dark Souls lore fan. Like this one. 
instilling the fire strength and so the unkindled which you are rise. Go. I won't do anything like into detail because I want to get to the first boss really quick. Well, if you want the, the tutorial tips are on the ground here, so if you're uh, new. Spading soul always. If you want some good starting souls, go in here because people, yeah, there's a item there which gives you like, I'm not sure, 2000 souls maybe. But yeah, if you really want a good start, use that one. I'm going to the boss real fast. The first boss for some people it can be challenging, but this is such an awesome game. Like in graphics wise, story wise, as in combat wise. I'll show you one bit of the graphics really. When you first enter this world, it's like. Holy cow, look at it. You look at the base and it's really detailed. It's awesome. Then you look up and it's like massive castle. Still over there, you can see the place we're going to because this is one long road. There's an arena there. Ah, uh, first of all, I press the buffer real quick. I really like that because in Dark Souls 1, you still had one of those uh, awesome views which would really be remembered abo above on anything else. The view you enter in Orlando and stuff. Oh, there's an item here as well, a stipend shard for upgrading your weapon. Don't forget to jump at the end because it's a people who don't time jumps very well, it's a very difficult jump. Alright, before we enter this boss fight, there's a few things you need to know some people who don't know Dark Souls very well. When you remove this sword, it will take 5 seconds or so to, to uh, get him to move. And as you can see, as a... I'm not sure what it is, like... Uh, abyss... Seed from his back, I'm not sure. But that will mean he will have a second phase of the boss fight, which is really different from the first one. I'll show you what I mean. But, and you can still damage him when he comes into life. So here, if you pull the sword... Now you can already damage him, you can target lock as well, and get 3 hits in or so. and I'm not sure if you can repulse him but here, avoid this arm if you go sideways and he's very aggressive so stay the hell away from him he has a tail attack, jump attack and a couple of swipe attacks which you need to remove uh, Heal up for a second and roll through it. Roll that attack which lands to the ground before him and he's already dead. Very easy. But make sure to dodge his attacks. Rolling is good, blocking is a little bit worse because you will lose a lot of stamina and may get knocked back. But this is it, in fact. It's very easy and I could try and parry him, but. This is not the ideal shield to do it. The better shield are light shields like bucklers or uh, target shields. But that makes the first half of the boss fight easier. When light bonfire and go on to Farting Shrine. And this was it people. Until next time. Bye bye!